How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we have a digital marketing expert joining us today. Please welcome Mark Inners. I'm so excited to talk to Mark here uh, today because he's going to share us with some SEO and digital marketing strategy and knowledge and definitely help us with some business insights. During this video podcast, I'll be asking so many common questions and to the mark regarding SEO and the digital marketing. And these marketing strategies and information are very often overlooked by many creatives when they're starting business at the beginning. So making sure you stick around to the end of this video or podcast. Don't forget to connect Mark on LinkedIn. So let's get started. How are you, Mark? For those of the people who don't know you, could you briefly tell us your background and what you do, Mark? Yeah, well, uh, anybody that can access my LinkedIn will see that my little life story there. I I've packed it over there, as you do. Um, I'm a, I guess I've been doing marketing pretty much straight out of university. In fact, even when I was in university, I was the, um, I started marketing there as a side job. Uh, I was in psychology, but psychology wasn't really doing it for me. And, um, but I did find, I did have a course on social psychology, which talked about the psychology of sales. And I really was interested in that. How do you get to, you know, how do you get people to open the door for you and basically uh, agree with you and how to convince people and, and get them to do what you want was absolutely fascinating. And then, that was the most interesting class out of, uh, out of psych. And then I decided to, um, to, tap, um, to tap into marketing, got hired as the, as the university uh, rep for Nielsen Cadbury, which is uh, the Cadbury chocolates arm of Canada and uh, for my university and also Pepsi. And uh, I brought Pepsi and Cadbury into the university shops. Uh, and that was my first introduction to, to broader marketing. And then I did more, more work for this marketing company. And they, they put me in touch with Nintendo and did some work for Nintendo. And eventually, um, as my, um, my life moved on, I moved to Japan and I ended up working at Disney in Japan, which is probably the ultimate marketing company. It's all about the show. And uh, did that for, for three years and uh, ended up in Australia. And I've been here for 20 odd years now and doing marketing the entire time um, from a copywriting perspective. But eventually the copywriting led me to SEO, which is search engine optimization, because, well, content drives search engines. And so my, my skill set as a copywriter was a natural fit. For, uh, for marketers who do SEO. And uh, it was, that industry was just starting out as I was arriving in Australia and somebody asked me to, uh, to do some work for them. And that's how I got here. Fabulous. Seems like your experience is like all over the place, all over the world, like, like can't start with Canada and the Japan and then come back to Australia. It's amazing, man. Like, yeah, as a copywriter, you, you actually travel around the world to see different industry and people doing things differently yeah my mom my mom's a translator a medical translator so on the side while i was in high school and university i helped proofread uh some um some of the medical marketing materials she was writing and so i started to see how people sell their products from an early age and i also i always had copywriting in my background but when i was at university and i was working for the chocolate people or or uh, the soft drink people well um, I was actually doing the physical hard work of, you know, meeting people, try, getting them to sign contracts, putting putting uh, Pepsi and Cadbury in in a prominent position in the shops. I was it was more physical work, actual, um, you know, one to one. I even did the Pepsi taste challenge for a while. So um, so that was real on the ground marketing, um, guerrilla style marketing. When I when I moved to Disney, it was it was all about writing at that point, and that's when I became really a, a proper copywriter, an advertising copywriter. And and when I got to Australia, didn't have any job, and uh, so I I ad advertised myself as a copywriter so that marketing firms, uh, marketers would hire me, and uh, that's that's how I got into SEO. Eventually, somebody said, "Hey, do you know about Google?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, of course. I use Google all the time. It's great." No, 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 no. It's going to take over the world and it's going to take it's going to take over uh, marketing. And I was like, really? OK, tell me and tell me more about that. That's how we ended up here. Fabulous. I, I love these stories. I like to see. Wow. So this is where I actually came from and the step by step. And 
little bit step out of your comfort zone to try something different and just follow what you interest the most. And yeah, so I know we, uh, because the reason I really want to invite you to come to the podcast, because one of the videos I was talking about to building a website and I mentioned SEO, uh, this, which is the search engine optimization. Uh, some people know, some people probably not very familiar with it. Uh, they know they need to have a website, but they don't know this thing need to be done properly in order to be searched, to be seen. And can you tell us why SEO is so important and that how does this thing going to fit into the, the broader digital marketing? SEO is grounded in websites, right? You, if you have a website, you, you need a website to advertise what you do, then you need SEO. If you're selling something online, uh, you'll need it. You could, you could do without it. You could use social media and paid advertising for it to be seen. And that's definitely part of the story. But the SEO part is there whether you want it or not. If you have a website, you're, you're doing SEO, whether you want to or not. It's the free search engine listing. So there are ads in search engines when people are typing in, say, they're typing in um, digital product photography and they're looking for digital product photographers. Who's going to show up, right? There'll be the ads. There might be some maps. Well, right at the maps and everything on down after until you get more ads at the bottom of the page, that's SEO, everything that's between the ads. Um, and who shows up there? Is it by magic? No, it's by design. They did some things that the search engine liked and, and that users liked. And, uh, and so the search engine said, okay, well, let's reward these people. Let's, they're clearly a digital product photographer for Sydney if you're searching in Sydney. Who's showing up there? That's SEO. It's really simple. Um, as a concept, it's actually quite hard and it's an everyday battle against other, your other competitors to, to get that prominent position because some people will skip the ads, go look at the maps or, or look at the reviews of the, on those maps that are tied to those maps or they'll go further down and they'll start to see who ranks naturally, organically, uh, for free. Um, because Google uh, just does it for free. It, it crawls the internet, tries to find out who the best digital product photographer in Sydney is, and will list them in order of what it thinks is, is the most relevant for you, the searcher. And so people like me uh, showed up in this space because it's, it's one thing to let Google do it by itself and say, okay, I prefer this site versus this site, or I prefer this content versus this content, but sometimes you need a little help. And there are ways to do this to make Google happy and to make the users happy. And that's what we're trying to do, is give Google and give the users exactly what they're searching for. And theoretically, if you do, if you do tick all the boxes, and there are many, many, many boxes to tick, well, then the, the website shows up. And that's great because, like I said, some people skip the ads. A lot of people skip the ads. They go, eh, I want to see who ranks number one for Google. Who does Google think is the best website out there for this particular keyword? And they'll go click on that. So, um, and that sends a message to Google too. So that's, that's where my work pays off because that could be more than 50% of the actual searchers on Google every day would go to the organic listing instead of clicking on the ads. I think you made a really good point. Like the, the, all this type of SEO work is still need to be done in order to be ranked or be properly served for Google. And Google is serving their clients to helping people to find information. So yes. for a business person or a creative a freelancer who want to get known to be searched by Google. I, this is another part of work we need it done properly, not just, just simply creating beautiful images, beautiful logos or typography. On that side is we need to be searchable. We need to be seen. So that is the whole purpose of ICO. The marketing play you touch on, like beautiful images, super important. It's a, it's a digital medium, right? This, this device was built for the so mobile phones were built, you know, as a visual device, right? But yes, it is a phone, but really it's not a phone anymore. It's a, it's, it's a computer you carry around with you and uh, it's a search machine, right? And of course, beautiful images need to show up because, well, it's not great reading on a phone, uh, but it, seeing is believing, right? So that's part of the picture, but 
there's a fine line, you know, what does a picture mean? If a picture isn't tagged properly, for example, it has no meaning. Uh, so there's all, all kinds of little things that go into a website showing up organically in Google for the right keywords. Uh, you have to tell Google, hey, this is what I'm doing. Look here, look here. And, uh, and, then, and then keep pushing that message. If you don't do it, somebody else will. And you'll find that they rank above you no matter how hard you try. Interesting fact that you t I learned from you is the Google doesn't really read image properly on the website. They wanted to know the text. They want to know the information by having people input the text in, in order to describe what it is. Google's getting better, right? Like it has an AI... AI engine, right? So it will be able to classify different types of images into what's on the screen. It will likely know if it's a stock image or not because it probably crawled the stock image libraries. And those are tagged and those are classified at the other point. So it will go, oh yeah, okay, it's that type of business. But say you took original photographs, right? And how would it know? Well, it, will, it might try to guess, but if you tag the picture, uh, and you you put an appropriate title on it, you know it says something something dot jpeg. Well, at least that's more information for the search engine. And if you craft it in a certain way, um, you can add that as the message that you're sending on your page because every page has a meaning for Google. You know, so one page could be about when let's continue that example about photography, product photography. Another one could be about, oh, I don't know, 3D design. Another could be about hmm, Amazon product photography. So a little more specialized. And it, the idea is you build those pages so that they match very popular search queries that your customers are looking for, right? And that's the idea. That's the game. That's the entire game. That's how search engines work. Now, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Google's quite sophisticated. And it is getting better, right? It can recognize some images, even if you don't tag them, it will try to make a guess, but you can help it. And that's where, that's where we come in. And, and people who do a really good job of helping Google figure out uh, what it is you're trying to say on that page or on that website, you know, those are the ones that rank and that's where the customers go. They don't go very far, right? They might skip the ads. They might do the map listing or skip that. They might do the first two or three in Google organic, but they're not gonna go on the second or third or fourth page. You can see the search intent fall off a cliff after you're outside of the first three in organic. People are impatient, people have other things to do. And if you're number four or number five or number 15, there's very, very few people that are gonna find you. Yeah, I, as a consumer, a user, I don't look over like second, even second page after the search results coming out. Yeah. But then, of course, there are millions of searches, right? Just because one person looked for, again, digital product photography, digital product photographer, that's a different keyword. And that's, that's, it's a slight difference. The ranking might not be the same of your page on both those words. And in Sydney, add more keywords to the search. It changes the search profile, right? And your page might be showing up at different places. Is it number one? Is it number three? Is it number five? Is it number 10? Is it not showing up at all for certain variations, right? And that's the trick there. If you can be visible across the keyword spread for what you do in a prominent position, it is straight money into your account if it's a valuable keyword. Um, and even, even little, little long, long, long searches, very specific searches, which we call long tail, if, if they're the very long ones, you know, like digital photogra uh, photography in Sydney for Amazon, right? That's a really long keyword search. Well, somebody's going to show up number one for that. Is it you? Is it somebody else? If you're a digital product photographer for Amazon products, you know, for Amazon e-commerce, wow, you know, are you showing up for that one? It might be a really important search. There might only be three people that search a month, right, in Sydney for that. But you want those people. So you need to be number one for that. That can make all the difference to your business. I know you've been serving or working with a lot of clients. Uh, what are the common ICO or website mistake you see small business owner often make? The easiest and the most common mistake and the easiest to avoid is actually um, when, you, when you, you say, oh, okay, I need a website. Right, you need a website, great. 
you should think about SEO first, not second, not third, not fourth. SEO is a website. And so people and everybody will say, oh, yeah, we do SEO. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure you do. By default, there are things you will do in creating a web page that are SEO driven. Like you'll have metadata field on the website, which is the page title, the page description that you see in Google. You can create one you know, on each page, right? And web developers will sometimes automate it. So whatever you called your page on your, on your first heading, they'll make that part of the metadata and they'll automatically generate it. Yeah, that's great. But sometimes that's, that's where the mistakes start, right? Um, there's all kinds of things that go into SEO to rank a page. So the first mistake that people make, and it's the, the common one is they, I need a website. They go to a web designer or a web developer, nothing wrong with that. But then they, they and, and, and they go, okay, I need a website. Um, I'd like to show these things on the website. But the designer goes, yeah, fantastic. Let's design it here. Let, let me scope it out. Here's the cost to design and produce it. And then they don't ask some of the fundamental things that you should be asking, which is why I say SEO should come first. You also want, you know, Google Analytics tracking on it so you can measure the traffic on your site. You want the website to be fast, so you need to consider hosting because any slow website, if you build a beautiful website, but it's not fast enough, other people are going to get ahead of you on the search listings and you'll have a beautiful website that no one will see. Who wants that, right? So you need some, so you need to start considering hosting. You need to start considering SEO fundamentals. Who's going to write my metadata? Who's going to hook up my Google Analytics? Who's going to hook up my Google Search Console? You're going, what's Google Search Console? That's another way for you to see what's working on your website and what's not. Then there's the, okay, what should I call every page? What should I, what should be the order of my pages so that, and what are the, my key priorities on the site? Because it's one thing to build a website, but what are you, do, what are you doing with this website? What do you want, pe who do you want to, to be found by? And what do you be, want to be found for, right? You need to map that out and say, okay, I, you know, I sell flights to Bali or I sell cruises to Cambodia. Great. That's the number one thing. That's what I really want to do. I want to sell cruises to Cambodia. Fantastic. Well, that should be a high priority item on your site. What are the other searches that go into that? that should they be different pages? Should they all be on the same page? That's why I'm saying, if you're going to put words on a page and you're going to develop a website, you need to think about SEO and you need to map that out. So that's why you should hire an SEO professional to help you first develop what the site map will look like. What are all the key points that you want so that whatever you do actually shows up? Because if, if, if SEO isn't a priority, a lot of people do this. They say, okay, well, that's too hard and that's, uh, that's, that's much too difficult. Um, how about I just throw a website up and then I start advertising it through other mediums? That's another solution. But then your, your website's a glorified business card. It's, it just has your name, what you do basically, but it's not tailored to what people are searching for on Google. Well, I think, I think that's a beautiful way to say that is if you don't do SEO, it's like, like just beautiful business card. And yeah. also the, it's by limited by you physically need to pass it to someone, otherwise people won't find it. Correct. I think that is, that is really a, a fundamental difference compared to be searchable. So the second common mistake, and that's when I see that the first mistake has been made, is when they come to me after they've built a website and they go, hey, I've got a website. Now it's time to do SEO. No, it was time to do SEO before you started building the website. You would have saved so much money and time because now... I'm going to tell you what you did wrong. And it's always a fun conversation. Here's why you're invisible. And uh, so you got the wrong homepage. You got the wrong stuff on the homepage. You're going to have to rewrite this URL. You're going to have to change this. That's thousands of dollars sometimes. And, and people go, I just paid for a website and everything. Yes, you did. And that was a terrible mistake. You had to come to me first so we could have established what's important to you and how to go get it. And then, then you can hire a web developer. And as long as the web developer uses clean code practices, so I, it doesn't, SEO doesn't stop when they start building. 
they need to build a fast website, a clean website, so that the search crawlers, uh, which which typically, you know, they'll hit a page, they'll crawl it, they go, what's this page about? What's this page about? But they'll only go so far down the page and then they give up. They're in a hurry. You need to give them as much page as you can, as much information as you can, as quickly as humanly possible. You need fast hosting, you need very clean code, and you need to put the right things in the right order on each page so you get picked up quickly. If you do the job right, that's the beauty of SEO. If you build it right from the ground up, you can start to show up for keywords. I'm mean, not saying the most popular keywords, but some keywords that'll make you money, you can start to show up for those quite quickly, quite quickly, quite prominently. And that's, that's the key to SEO. You wanna build a beachhead. You're not gonna be visible tomorrow for life insurance Australia or mortgage Australia, which is like a, a keyword that would you know take you years to get, right? Uh, because insurance companies have been doing this forever and they have beautiful pages and all the information. Even if you copied them and improved on what they did, Google would not give you any credit. It takes time. So what you do is you find lower keywords that still get searches where you can build basically a position of strength where you can become visible and where people can find you and then it builds because Google goes, oh, people like this. More people are liking this. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crawl this again and I'm gonna show it more prominently. That's SEO, that's how you build it. You start on the outside and you build it back in. Eventually, you can build a nice little niche where you're pretty much unshakable for things that really matter and then the phone is ringing steadily. Um, and that buys you more funds, right? You get, you get business coming in regularly that you don't have to do much for because you did all the work before. Then you can do paid ads, you can do social ads, you can do all kinds of other things uh, that you would normally do to market your business, knowing that you've got this extra cash coming in from SEO all the time. I think you pointed out a really good thing is uh, most people were small business owners or creatives, they really been passion driven by the design, the look of the, the visual things. And however, when actually go to doing the proper SEO is to thinking your strategy, what you want to do, what's the purpose of your website and starting from there. And then also, I think one thing that uh, I actually pay more attention about what you talk saying, well, it's not more, way more than just the keywords. And you need to think about the, the hosting. You need to have fast speed. And you also you need to think about how to run the, uh, the ads on your website and also how to put every other things properly on your website in order to make it really favorable for Google to rank. It's not just what, it, what text you put it in for images or keywords. So it's more than that. It is really a large part of SEO is planning. I would call it part of business planning. Before you do anything, SEO, a good SEO guy could tell you based on what you need and what you want to achieve out of the internet and how many customers you need and how, how regularly you need them uh, and how, how fast you're going to get them. You can actually plan this out. You can ask your SEO guy, okay, I wanna do this, right? What does that look like? And they'll, they'll say, okay, well, you'll need to do this. It costs this much. You'll need to do that. It costs that much. A good SEO person will be able to map out for you roughly how much it'll cost and how long it will take before you actually see a dollar from the internet. Now, you can always do paid ads, right? You could pay Google. And so you pay a digital marketer to set up a Google advertising platform and optimize it for you because you, you can't just leave it to chance. You have to set it up correctly. A lot of people go on Google ads or ask Google to set up their ads account for them. Don't do that. That's giving away. That's giving free money to Google. No, no. Get somebody professional to do it, and and they'll set it up for you. It doesn't have to cost a lot to ongoing uh, for for them to to keep tweaking it. But setting it up correctly is very important. There's a cost to that. A good SEO person would still be able to tell you how much it would cost you to do ads, um, because you need to think about that. Um, how much it costs to set up everything you need for a successful business launch, right? Most people don't do that exercise at all. They don't plan. They go, oh, I'm starting this business. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do a website. Okay, how much is a website? They're, they're not thinking about what the, what, what the website's gonna bring in or how much it's going to cost to build. 
they're like, oh, okay, let's find the cheapest website. Okay, I'll do a website on Wix or on um, on any of these other platforms, you know, that that you could do. And there's nothing wrong with those platforms inherently. Sometimes though, you're sacrifice, you're making sacrifices when you're signing up for a Wix. There's, there's, there's the, you can have a website tomorrow if you go on Wix or, or any of these other platforms, right? There's quite a few of them. Um, Weebly is another one. Um, oh, there's tons. Um, they're great. They're really well built. You can have a beautiful website tomorrow and even have some SEO bits in it, right? Doesn't mean you're gonna show up. It doesn't mean you're gonna get any customers, but at least you'll look good, right? Okay, that there's a price to pay later if you want to be successful, if you want to beat all your other competitors, right? There's a price to pay for that. Sure, you showed up online, you did it quickly, nothing wrong with that. But when you want to get serious and you want to start dominating for the product categories or the service categories you, you really want to push, that's, that's when this business planning is really important. That's why I would hire an SEO guy right away, if only to tell me how much this is all going to cost and how long it's going to take. Sometimes I have to tell people, look, you don't have a chance in hell of making this work uh, uh, in SEO or on the internet. You don't have the money. The competitors are too strong. They're already there. Sorry, I would find something else to do. It's crushing, right? Like it's, it's these, this is people's dreams or people's passion, but you have to tell them there is no way that if you spend this money and this amount of time, you're going to get anything out of it. You're wasting your time. You're going to get all your money. Since you mentioned that, because after I post that video uh, a couple of days ago, and I do have a few uh, subscribers that actually DM me on Instagram, found me, and then tell me, like, when they'll, I look at your, I uh, watch your videos and they talk about website. Can you take a look at your website? Uh, take a look at my website. But I feel like they are looking for SEO advice. And of, of course, from my perspective, I can only look at visual design, the images and stuff. And, and I know you have a process kind of like doing a sort of SEO audit before you really onboarding clients. Would you mind to share some of your process, how you do this before you really tell, I can help you with that. Because you just mentioned some of, some of potential clients you just need to directly tell them your budget, your timeline is impossible to, to achieve through SEO. So SEO, search engine optimization, works with search engine. In Australia and New Zealand, we're really, really lucky. Google is 95% of the game. 95% of people go to Google. The second most popular engine is Bing. And the number one keyword on Bing is Google. They Google, they, they go Google, and then they go to Google, and then they search. And that's how ridiculous it is. So in Australia, there's one search provider. It might change in the future. It's not the same all over the world, but in Australia and New Zealand, Google is at its most dominant. So you only need to know how Google works in Australia because that's the game. If you don't show up on Google, you're dead. You're not going to be seen. So um, what, what we do typically is we, we do keyword research because this is keyword driven, right? It's about the words that people are typing into Google to find you and your services. So you may think you know what your business is, but what are people actually typing in? I'll give you an example. Um, there was a, a retirement uh, website. It was to help people in retirement. And they wanted to call their business something completely unrelated uh, to, to retirement. And I advised them against it. I said, no, this website is about retirement and helping you in retirement right? And there's a huge search volume for retirement related keywords and, and, um, and seniors because who retires? It's seniors. And they said, well, we don't want to talk about retirement and we don't talk, want to talk to people about seniors because seniors don't like to be referred to as seniors. They say that. And that's true. Seniors will tell you, old people will tell you that don't want to be referred to as old people or seniors. But what they type in Google is retirement for seniors, right? What should you call your website? What keywords should be on your website if people who are typing in retirement for seniors help me with that? <laughs> what should be the, the website's tie, uh, name, right? What should be on every page that you care about? 
And they didn't want to do that. I was like, great, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Your audience, sure, they're telling you they don't want to be called seniors. But when they're searching in Google, they're calling themselves seniors. Because <laughs> nobody's watching, right? <laughs> And so your website should be all about that. You should do them the favor of showing them number one for all those searches. So that was my advice. They actually didn't take it. They went in the opposite direction. And then they tried to sneak in the word seniors, which is which is a tactic at least. But, you know, I'm sure it cost them millions of dollars, honestly. It's, it's a very interesting perspective. Yeah, people. Feel it's an that. example of keyword research. You got to do the research because you got to find out what people are typing in versus what you think they're typing in. What are they actually typing into Google? And what's the search volume? How many people are doing each keyword per month? Because if you're going to build a website, wouldn't you rather do it for words that people are actually searching for rather than words that don't exist? So a lot of websites go completely wrong and call things that nobody's searching for. And they're like, huh, SEO doesn't work. My website doesn't work. It's all garbage. I'm just going to do paid ads and social media. Nothing wrong with paid ads and social media, by the way. But no, you missed the point. You didn't, you didn't find out what people were searching and you didn't build your website around those words. That's a terrible mistake. You're throwing money away. So that's the first thing you should do. I really like this idea to do the research, the keyword research. Be honest with you, when I do my YouTube content, I also have a, a, a plugin. It's called TubeBuddies, uh, which is actually do some research on the keywords to before I producing content. Now, I wanted to answer some questions. We're solving problem when people are actively search. So then while providing answers to people well to, to see my content, to want to watch the solution. So I think the same way work with the website SEO. Before you build an SEO, you think, oh, you're a photographer. But photographer is too big, too broad. And you wanted to know what kind of photographer people are looking for and then building the keywords and then come back to build a website. It's kind of reverse engineering, but, but you didn't even know your audience, your, your people to really actively looking for it. I think that's a good, very good point. Uh, so if if come to the um to the co uh, questions that if I'm brand new creatives or three D artist, I want to have my own business. I heard you mock. You said I need to think about SEO first. And but how long does it usually take to rank uh, my website up to really getting the proper result using SEO? And sometimes, sometimes you're in a new field. Sometimes you're in you're on the cutting edge of something brand new, right? And there are no words to describe it. You are inventing the words. That's a problem. That means, uh-oh, you're going to have to do social media. You're going to have to do paid advertising. You're going to have to do things to basically introduce the public to these new words, right? Like in our vocabulary, AI, chat GPT, we're, they, these are relatively new words for the public, right? They're they're main they're going to become mainstream if they're not like artificial intelligence AI is is going to is to, going to become you know a common word now but maybe two years ago even for a lot of people it was a not, it, they wouldn't even know what it is right the common uh, the common everyday people but now it's part of the vocabulary so sometimes the words don't exist that's different that's that's a whole different problem but most of the time. You're, you're building something that's tied to vocabulary that already exists. You just need to find out what's the most popular word in your country. Sometimes it varies from market to market. So it's difficult to say, you know, like, oh, how long does it take for SEO to work? If you're in an established marketplace with, you know, long-term players, it can be incredibly difficult. Like I, I, I talked about life insurance and mortgage, right? Life insurance Australia, mortgage Australia. If you're selling life insurance or mortgages, becoming number one on Google for that word, wow, good luck. Almost impossible, right? Um, it's, it's, it would take insane, insane amount of money to develop all the content and everything you need to crawl back all the history that these other guys have online of getting indexed by Google for those words, right? Um, so it's... It depends on the keyword. It depends if it's a new keyword, a new industry with not many competitors. Uh, how much money do the competitors have to throw 
to throw at SEO, to throw at social, to throw at paid advertising, to throw at all the digital marketing channels, right? It varies completely from product to product. Um, rule of thumb for small to medium businesses, I'd say four to six months is not unrealistic to start to develop that beachhead that I was talking about. Sometimes you can get very lucky. You can do it in a month or two and you can have a beachhead where small keywords immediately start ranking. You know, and you're bringing in steady money from these little, little niche keywords. But the big ones, the ones you're really after, that could take years and a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not profitable sometimes to just be the small fish that's eating all the crumbs. Um, you can be that guy and you can develop a very successful business. Uh, that's Teflon for that. And, you know, but the really top end words, the ones that are visible for, say, all of Australia, <laughs> they, they, they can take longer. Um, it just depends on the competition. Who's done what and how long have they been doing it for and how good is their marketing around those words? So, but yeah, at, at a glance, I'd say four to six months is not unrealistic to start to develop that beachhead. It's, it's a long-term investment. And also you need to think about this is, this is just part of your business. It's like if you open a shop, and, uh, you know, for a lot of creatives doing online, they don't need to have a physical shop or store selling merchandise. But think about it. If you're renting a property to sell something, you need to pay it monthly. And that SEO, the website is more like the shop that uh, you need just to just kind of maintain it, make it look nice and good, be, be searchable online. That's how I see this. It's, you know, Google is the main street. You know, that's the shops on the main street. If you're not on Google and you're not prominently on the main street, you're in a back alley somewhere, they will not find you. So unless they know you can lead them there with paid ads or social or other tricks, right? But if you want to be on the main street, that's SEO. And uh, and that's that's perfectly valid, right? You would do the budgeting. If you were setting up a shop, say you're a florist and you want to be on this street, you would you would say, okay, rent is this much, fit out is this much signage or you know flyers or whatever is this much you would budget all of that well you can do the same thing and this is where seo comes in hire an seo guy to say okay website is this much you know all the things that go into seo are this much paid advertising is this much social is this much how much how many hours is going to take how much of those hours going to cost how much is it going to bring in and when you got to think about that too just like you would you know if I build a shop on a florist shop on a main street and I've done the banners and I've done the fit out and I've paid my rent and I got my business license and everything. Okay. Those are all the costs. When am I going to start to sell flowers and how many flowers do I think I'm going to sell right away? What does my budget look like? Do the same exercise when you're doing a website, do the exact same exercise, get all the costs out, find out how long it'll take to, you know, forecast how, how long it'll take to make your, your money back. I think this is a more proper approach when you think about a business because you need collecting data. You need to know your numbers, you know, why you invest all these SEO. You want to have a proper return for that. So another aspect you mentioned about earlier was talking about to, to build your SEO, the website properly in order to link to Google Analytics. You want to get some data back to see the traffic, how, what kind of metrics it works. Do you, what kind of like the uh, metrics or things that, that you are tracking in order to see the, the, the success of your SEO campaigns? Would you mind to, to share about some of well, that? There are basic metrics that Google will share with you and has been sharing and will continue to share. How many people came on the page? How many sessions? You know, because people are not sessions. People can come back to a site many times. So what does that look like? And are they leaving right away? That's called a bounce rate. So those, so views, sessions, users, bounce rates, they're your classic metrics, right? Those are just the visitors. And you can see them by channel. They came organically. They came through paid search. They came for, through social. They came through your emails. They came from referrals of other sites. They came, you can see where everybody came from, realistic, relatively speaking, right? Some people can mask where they came from. You can see which countries or which uh, which suburbs sometimes even if their IPs are being tracked properly. Um, you don't get perfect data, but you get a really, really good idea, right, of where people came from and what they're doing on your site and how long they're staying on your site. How long is every page view? What's the average length of time that people spend on your site? And the 
the most important thing, the, the very basic thing. Are they buying? Are they calling you? Are they contacting you? Are they buying if you're on an e-commerce site? And what are they buying? Where do they come from, right? What keyword drove that? And you can start to put a dollar value on every keyword and say, eh, great keyword, not great keyword. And, and mostly you can also see where the website fails, right? Sometimes people come to a page and either that page is not loading properly and they're getting a really bad experience and they're leaving. And you see, oh, everybody's leaving this page. Nobody's buying. Why is that? Should be working. You go on and you go, oh, uh, my page crashed or the picture was so big on it or there's a coding error, or or you'll find you know that there's a mistake you didn't know about. You thought, oh, I built a perfectly good page. Google Analytics will tell you where the problems are too. You go, oh, here you go. And Google Search Console, which is another tool that developers use, which you can easily set up, will also show you the similar data. It'll tell you, oh, these pages suck, and here's why. They're slow, or they've got a, a, a coding error in them. Great, and they'll even tell you what the coding error is. And you just give that to your developer and go, fix it. <laughs> Fix it like your life depends on it. Come on. And then and then they fix it, you get better results. Guess what? When you get better results, magically Google will reward you for it. They'll go, look at this. This website has no errors. It's super fast. And, and people are actually buying because Google knows, right? Google can see, oh, your website is accomplishing the mission. Look at all these happy people. And these happy people are now leaving reviews because Google knows that the guy who came in or the girl who came in and bought whatever, and then reviewed it later as a happy customer. He gave you a five-star review. Google knows, right? It's going to reward you for it. At least it should, right, in theory. And that's the idea. You want to make happy customers. You want Google to see it. And you don't want Google to see any errors if you can avoid them. So another part of SEO is we use a whole bunch of tools because it doesn't stop once you build the website, right? You guys are going to keep building, right? You're going to want to have more products. You're going to have better pages. You want to improve your rankings. Great. You don't want any errors. Part of SEO is actually making sure you're error-free. And by error-free, I mean super fast, super clean, accomplishing your, your mission. You're getting sales. They're buying, and not only are they doing that, they're reviewing you after. And they're coming back. They're coming back again to buy some more. They're telling their friends. Google knows all that, right? So you got to make sure that that mission works. So SEO doesn't just you know build pages. We try to build an ecosystem where people will refer to their friends after giving you five-star reviews and buy again and again and again and again. That's how you can guarantee number one rankings because that experience, Google knows that experience and goes, look, these guys not only sell more, they sell faster. There's no breakage. There's no breakage on any device. There's no breakage on mobile. There's no breakage on desktop. They're selling more than all the other guys. But on top of that, they're getting more reviews, positive reviews from those buys. You know, so there's a, there's a way to set up, you know, are you happy with your purchase? And they're getting those through. The public is saying, you know what? Thanks, Google. You referred me to this page. I bought from it. I got what I wanted. I'm so happy now. Who's going to rank number one, right? That's SEO. It's, it's, so once you've built it, you make sure you have a really, really thorough sales experience. Some, some brands are really good at this. When you go on a store and you see a beautiful customer experience, you were able to buy in two seconds what you wanted. It was delivered fast. And you tell the world, you know, on social media or Google reviews, um, you know, Google knows. And Google is going to reward that shop. So it's important as you're shopping, when you notice good online experiences, Man, record the thing. Go back there, do it again. Record the whole thing. The worst thing you could do is give it to your developer, your SEO guy, and say, look at this. I want that. That's best in class. Because you will know a great shopping experience when you see it. So record it. And tell, tell your guys to do exactly that. Because we, we're, we're not all billionaires, right? But right now, Amazon and other billionaire companies are doing billionaire stuff they're investing they're testing everything right and if you have a great shopping experience especially on mobile and you love what they did right you might not be able to do it as perfectly as they do right they, they have unbelievable servers and great delivery but if you could get very close for a small shop right who would win in your town you would 
So that's that's I guess another lesson I could I could say is look for the best out there, and 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 don't try to reinvent the wheel. Don't try to be cleverer than they do. Uh, the odds of you having a better idea than guys who have been doing e-commerce or or websites for twenty years, and you who's just new to it are very slim. What I say the best process is find the best, copy the best, and improve it by you know. Five percent, if you can, do it a little bit better if you can. But usually, if you copy the best, you'll already skip a whole bunch of things. the The ultimate compliment to a marketer like me is when the competition steals all my stuff and copies it. I go, "Oh, wow, that's terrible!" But thank you. You've acknowledged that I'm doing the best out there. Now I'm going to go back and make your life harder. I'm going to I'm going to try harder, right? And then sure, they'll copy me again, but that's okay. That's okay, because when you're the best, your clients are making piles and piles of money, and the other guys are chasing, and you want to be copied. That's the ultimate sign of respect when somebody tries to steal wholesale everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. For 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 this particular channel, when we uh, actually have a lot of audience that are creatives, like the producing images, producing uh, uh, graphic designs, or uh, all these type of uh, kind of creatives. So when we're knowing uh, one thing you pointed out, saying the website, you need to still constantly building to making sure there's no error in the process and to let Google to know we're doing it properly done and being favorable to be searched. So one thing we know that uh, besides the stuff we can put in on our end, like as a user or developer, is to getting all the content organized. The other thing is the, the link building. So that is something that uh, to kind of, I my understanding is this is more like in the science basis, it's getting peer reviews. If you can get in some more well established person or business that can help us. Would you mind to share a little bit more information about this concept? Yes, link building is the secret weapon of the SEO industry. Um, so yes, we put the right words on every page. We design an error-free, perfectly structured website. All fantastic and fast, right? Fast hosting, great. If you're better than your competitors on all of those, it doesn't mean you're gonna win. But it puts the odds in your favor, but there's one more thing. And that one more thing is link building. And SEO practitioners do link building, which means what they do is they find other websites to link back to you because Google, is going to go, well, I don't know you. You're sure, OK, you sell flowers on this street in this part of town. Wonderful. Thank you. You have some reviews. Well done. Your website's error free and fast. And people are getting good experience. Wonderful. But I still, you know, how do I know you're a legitimate business? Well, you should have links coming in telling Google this is a legitimate business. What are legitimate businesses online? They typically have a few key properties. I'll give you the, the high list. Um, you know, there's a Google business profile. When you Google your business name, usually a box should show up that has your business name on it. So, you know, if you if you Google Wembo, even just your name, that's tricky. But Wembo, Wembo Zhao, you should show up right away. No one else should be there, especially in Australia, right? And you should have your business right there and should say what you do. You have your phone number. That's the first link. It's called the Google business profile. It used to be called Google My Business. In Australia, it's critical, right? That's your second website. Has all the key details there. If people want to call you, they can do it directly from there. If people want to review you, they can do it directly from there. It belongs to Google. There's no higher link than a link coming in from Google, right? So Google Business Profile, you have to have one right away. Word of caution, another classic mistake that people, it's not SEO related, but it's a classic mistake. Before you do SEO, before you set up a website, before you set up anything in business, do an ASIC search. Find out if the name that you wanted to call your business belongs to anyone else. Don't waste your time inventing a business, calling it something. Find out that somebody else has the exact same name. And the second thing you want to do is find out if they have the trademark on that name. Because if they have the trademark on it, they might be able to take over your website and say, hey, you can't operate that website and you should give me the URL. You could be building a business empire and giving it to someone else. Do ASIC and do, do, uh, do research. But then once you have that and you're safe in the knowledge that you can operate a business and fully trademark it, great, wonderful, do that. 
And then set up your Google My Business profile. You can do that even before you have a website almost. And you just go in there, put your business details, lock that baby down. That's the number one link coming into your website. So Google Business Profile. Second one would be YouTube channel. You say, I don't have any videos. I don't care. Set up a YouTube channel right away. Tie it all up to your business name. Send it back to your website. Because why? Because Google owns YouTube. You want a Google link. That's two. Wonderful. So start there, right? Um, and then make your way down. Um, you want to? You want more links? Fine. Facebook, right? You might not like it. Lock it down to your business name. Tie it back to your website. You know, ideally, you should be posting on it. You should be do what you do on your website. You should you should uh, showcase, right? So if you do a post, a blog post, put it on Google My Business Profile. Uh, business profile. Link it back to your site. You know, if, if there's a YouTube video as part of your post, wonderful. Link it back to your site or your post, right? Do the same thing with Facebook. Who? What does Facebook own? Instagram. Lock it, lock it down. Put some pictures up, link it back to your website. Those are quality links you can do yourself. They're part of SEO. They basically tell Google, hey, this is a valuable business. It's a legitimate business. It's a serious business. Look. They're, they they got all these social media properties. Who builds those and links them back to websites? Well, legitimate businesses do. Next one is LinkedIn company page. You have a LinkedIn profile? Build a company page off it. Link it back to your website. That's the that's the top right there. Bing, okay, Bing's pretty much useless, but Bing has a business directory. <coughs> Go to Bing Places for Business. Link it back to your website. In fact, you can copy the Google business listing and uh, and put it on Bing. It'll suck it right up and put it right in. When speaking about to having all these social media platform or Google business built, I need to set up them. And then when you're saying link back to your website, it's basically the website footer, right? Just making sure you link your the social media back to there. You know, on that business property, do a post or 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 show that this is where this is tied this YouTube account is tied to this business already it sends a signal whether you do one video or never do any videos at least you protected your YouTube account with your brand name so no one can set up a YouTube account that resembles your brand name right if I could set up a YouTube account tomorrow and call it Wembo's out photography and then you'd go what are you doing well I'm taking it away from you is what I'm doing and I'm muddy muddying the waters. Don't let your competitors do that. When you have a business name, starts locking in all those free properties out there. Google Business Profile, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn Company Page, Bing Places for Business. Hell, Yelp reviews. Go set up a Yelp account and, and you know, ask a friend to review your business, set up your business on Yelp and verify it, and then ask a friend to do a review for you, if at least you have one. That's a link coming in from Yelp. Yelp is very popular in the States, not so popular here, but it's a valuable link. And again, you want to protect your brand, right? Don't let an SEO guy out there, because there are dodgy SEO people, They, if they notice that you didn't protect your brand, they might create a fake listing and link it back to something else, like their brand, you know? And that sends a mixed signal to Google. It sends your customers elsewhere. Protect your brand. Do a Twitter account. Do Snapchat. Do whatever you need to do. It doesn't mean you're going to use them all, but protect them. Protect your brand. Lock them in if you can. It doesn't mean you should do all of them, but protect your brand. You know, yellow pages or white pages, sometimes there's free listings for those. Lock it down. True Local in Australia. Get a true local account. Get a friend to put one review on there. If you never use it, at least it exists and you protected it. You know, whatever you can think of. If you're in video, uh, in video play, maybe you want a Vimeo account too, tied to your brand. Lock those babies down. Those are all valuable links. Then there are other links you would hire an SEO professional for, and that's what we do every month. We try to find directories or valuable sites that can send a signal back from another web page back to your back to your website. That's that's active link building. It's different than those big properties that you control. We just we just do that. Always send a signal to Google to say, hey, 
this website's about this keyword. This page is about that keyword. Take a look at it. Take a look at it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a steady signal. If you want to be a top performer, eventually, after you've done everything else, you'll ask your SEO company to do link building for you. It can basically make the difference between a number one and a number two ranking. Yeah, it feels like is a recap of what you said. Basically, there are two types of link that uh, we can do. One is like as a creative, as a business owner, I can set up my, my account on Google Business or, or I, I the other social media or related to your business. These are more like the uh, free links or to to directly set up for your brand according to your name, making sure you have the name uh, used and then directly link back. The other part of link building is definitely the need to be hired professional to do this, but helping you to building another different uh, kind of type of links directly back to your website. These two types of links that we can probably done. But if you are one of creatives, start with a free one to getting the big major ones getting ready. And then that's something that we can immediately improve after watching this uh, or listening to this uh, video podcast. You know, right now, <clears throat> AI, the ChatGPT, you also mentioned about this. these two things, they are getting super popular. And do you see any trends or things that are actually going to change the SEO environment? Or how can you adapt these new things coming in uh, in order to still having good marketing strategy, keep getting the good marketing result? Well, ChatGPT is, or, or other AI tools like it are, are useful because if your English isn't perfect, uh, or, and eventually any language, right? It allows you to write a draft copy of whatever page you wanted, typically. It doesn't mean that the facts on it are correct, but at least it, it allows you to write a, a compelling draft that's well-structured and grammatically okay. Uh, there are, you have to check that the grammar was okay. Like some, like uh, ChatGPT, I noticed for now, is, is writing American English. And even if you tell it to write Australian English or British English, <coughs> it doesn't do it doesn't do it perfectly. So these still, you know, little quirks, but um, it is a good tool. I use it as a draft. If I want a draft instead, you know, when you're creating a website, sometimes you don't have all the content, but you know you want to write a page about something, get the, get the content from ChatGPT, call it draft content. At least it gets you a starter, right? But know that a lot of people will have the same content on their website because they will use AI tools too, and everybody will be using the same kind of language. Then you might want to go back in and tweak it. Um, but it gives you a great draft and a grammatically correct draft, which is important because that's another thing, right? If you make grammatical errors or syntax errors, um, Google will know and won't like it. So when I talk about being perfect online, not only do you have to be fast and not have broken links on websites and broken bits, and uh, you also need to be grammatically correct. So he, sometimes, you know, like uh, you you make a you make a spelling mistake. Well, Google will know it's a spelling mistake. Sometimes also, you know, you have a full stop, or you you know, and you you forget to put the space between the next between sentences just by mistake, right? Um, well, Google will know it's a mistake. You want perfection. These tools are helpful. So, you know, an AI writer will help you get more content out faster. It still needs to be revisited, but wow, it's, um, it's a huge advantage because before hiring a copywriter and, and briefing the copywriter and then reviewing the copywriter's work could take weeks and cost thousands of dollars, right? Now it can take minutes and cost you nothing. So the work of copywriters, I'm sorry to say, has been incredibly devalued. Uh, on the flip side, for, for the rest of humanity, uh, suddenly having quality, grammatically appropriate content that was better than the garbage you would pay thousands of dollars for that would take weeks to produce can actually be yours tomorrow uh, online. That's incredibly powerful. So you can expect websites will become more content rich how it's going to change later when everybody has really content rich sites, it's going to complicate life for Google and it's going to complicate life. Uh, you know, for SEO, you will really need to be more and more perfect, right? If everybody has the same content or it's content neutral, what's going to stand out, right? It's the other bits. Is your website accomplishing its mission fast? Is it, is it doing all the key things on mobile, especially that are useful for consumers, right? Mobile is a really important device. 
you should really pay attention to mobile. So it's going to be about the functionality, the usability. Are, is your website combati compatible for disabled people? Some people don't see quite well. Does your website have contrast issues in, in visuals? There's all kinds of things you can think about. So the quality assurance uh, portion of SEO is going to become even more important. As we have all these tools, we can develop a lot of content. We can develop a lot of pages very quickly. You want to make sure that you're presenting the public and Google with a it, with a near perfect experience. So basically, I know I need to get an SEO expert helping with my website to get ranking. And I want to know if I'm kind of new to getting started. I know first thing you just taught me through this podcast. You need to think about SEO before you building website, design website. Now I, I'm ready. So I want to know I, how much budget I need properly to set up before I decided to reach out to hire a professional SEO uh, to help me with that. Uh, is How do you charge money by project or subscription or other things? Would you like to share a little bit more? It's It depends. For, what I would say is get the audit done. Get get Find out basically what the business plan is online. And an SEO, an SEO person will tell you, okay, you need to do all these things. Here's the cost of doing them properly. And here's, here's why you should do them. And here's, here's the long-term benefit of them. They will game plan the next couple of months out for you and tell you what things need to be done and what cost it is to them. Whether you do it or not, it's valuable information to have in your hand. You know, at least you know, okay, this is, this is how much it costs to put up an SEO friendly website, a real one with proper keyword research. This is how much it costs. And then, you know, and so get that part done, you know, and that can, and that can vary. It depends on how, how, how competitive your, your field is and how many products or services you have. The more you have, the more it'll cost, but it's a, it's a couple of thousand dollars for sure to do the entire job properly of planning. Um, because you, you need to do the research and you need to map out what that website will look like and how much it'll cost to actually produce the content, you know, imagery, uh, words on the page, all those those basic links if you want help with them. How much would it cost if somebody did that for you versus you doing it, right? Hmm. So it sounds like uh, for beginners or for business uh, creatives, we need to ask ourselves, what do you want first? Instead of uh, what is the pr your price? Well, I think that is one thing that we need to understand what kind of things we want to achieve through our uh, website or why we need to hire an SEO expert helping us on board. Because this is a business. You are the leader or you are the person to actually manage people to building the stuff that you want to build. So without this kind of mindset or without this strategy, you know, it doesn't matter how ex what kind of expert you bring on your team. You don't even know what to do. You don't even know what you want. Yeah, so that, that's very critical. So once we have the plan, so we'll be able to, to reach out to you, maybe chat about the project and the steps, we can break it down the process and then we can build that monthly or in the long term. There is an ongoing component uh, and you can map that out. But typically what I would say is the business plan part. If you're only going to do two things, at least do the keyword research to find out exactly what that, what that keyword set looks like and get the uh, site map of the website that you should be building at the, at the very least, right? Those two things, an SEO guy can provide for you, and, and you, should, you should get that done. That, that, has a, that has a fixed cost depending on your business, but at least you'll know how much that costs, and it'll give you a plan. You'll say, hey, if nothing else, <coughs> I need to chase these words because they're important, and I need to do it this way. I need to build my website this way. That's a cheap way to get started and make, you know, do not make the fundamental mistake of building a website and then going, hey, what, what words should I chase? It's too late. Yeah. So, sounds very, very good. So just start with the uh, kind of like SEO audit to talking to an expert saying, well, these are the keywords I wanted to build or I want to chase and to, how, how much the search volume, what can you help me with that? So if my audience want to know about your business and uh, definitely want to reach out to you, what is the best way to do so? Go on the website or just Google Agent 6 Marketing and I'll show up. You'll see my Google business profile. Get in touch right away. Um, send me an email, call the phone number, but probably send the email better because I get a lot of phone calls. It's probably <laughs> best 
just just actually send us an email, um, and we can tell you. We'll have you can say, "Hey, this is my business. This is what I'm doing. This is my location." So if you tell me your business, your location, and what you're selling, already that's that's plenty of information for me. I already have an idea of what it's going to look like and what you need um, because either I've worked with uh, with people in your industry or I know your industry. Uh, it, it'll inform me right away, and I can come back to you very quickly. We can have a quick chat and 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 find out exactly what the cost of that audit is and what you're going to get out of it. So and also I'm making sure to put your website links under the description of this video and also your LinkedIn links as well. So you can get in connect with Mark. We're, we're a boutique agency. And, uh, and, the, and the reason we are is because we work with select clients. I usually only work with one client in one industry. So for example, I have a florist in Sydney. If you want to sell flowers in Sydney, can't do it. I have a chocolatier, I have a photographer. I have a plumber, I have an electrician. So already I, I sometimes may not be able to help you, but I can point you in the right direction. If you, if you, I, I do, I do have some close friends in the industry who also do the same thing and that I can recommend. So, but uh, typically what we like to do is lock down one vertical and work with one partner because it wouldn't be ethical to work with a second person in the same industry if they're competing, right? So uh, we, we only work with, with people in their vertical and in their location. I can work with another florist in Melbourne though. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you're actually protecting your client. We got it. Thank you so much for your time, Mark. I really appreciate all these information you taught us uh, in, on this podcast. And uh, we definitely would like to hear some feedback from our subscribers. And please let us know what you think about this type of video content. And if you do enjoy this type of content, feel free to leave topics or questions you want Mark or me to answer in the future videos. We would love to have some topic related to SEO and digital marketing in general. And we would love to help more freelance artists to getting start running their own creative business. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next time. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mark. All right. Cheers.